Welcome Nikita Lagway and Justin Jean Grand to the show. It's great to see you guys. How are you? Good, good. Um, so just to um, introduce uh, yourselves, I know that we could read a bio and everything else, but Justin, why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell everybody who you are and uh, kind of your role in DJ Lagway's life? Good. Uh, I'm Nikki Lagway's sidekick. No, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm CEO of the Network Advisory. Um, I represent DJ and manage him uh, along with this wonderful woman, Nikki, here. Um, I'm 20 years of sports marketing and representation. Um, always have represented talent through the lane of marketing. And obviously with the explosion of NIL, kind of have been at the forefront of that. I graduated from University of Florida in 2006 and stayed there until 2009. Got to live a lot of the glory days in Tebow era. Actually, you guys probably see my diplomas over my shoulder there. Uh, it's a proud, proud gator. And um, yeah, when NIL um, came around, I had the opportunity to work with some initial quarterbacks, Malachi Nelson and Julian Lewis. And that's how I initially met uh, Derek and Nikki. And so I've been blessed to be on this uh, DJ journey now for a couple years and, um, you know, watching his rise and helping to be a uh, advocate and uh, along with the journey and, and trying to help navigate both the parents and DJ on, on the path forward and, and doing something that's never really been done before. Special to me just because University of Florida always holds a special place in my heart. And you guys read the press clippings are probably closer to this to any of us of DJ's desire to lead the Gators back has made this whole thing special. So, um, but yeah, that's my role. That's and, awesome. and real quick, there's, um, just uh, a compliment to you, Justin. There's so many, when NIL became a thing, there were so many bad actors that kind of just looked to take advantage. And I think the job that you've done with DJ and, and, and your company, um, that you guys are first class. So, um, just well, I really, to you. I really appreciate that. Um, in our head, you know, the idea was like, if you're going to do this, you know, go find talent that could be generational and that you could go the distance with. And, even when we were talking to the Nickies, like if you had found Tom Brady when he was 16 or 17 and he could have built his brand, what would that look like? And um, so we're, we're excited about what we're doing and it's a lot of fun. That's great. And Nikita, Nikki, I, I know that you don't have to introduce yourself. I know everybody knows who, <laughs> who you are. Um, but so welcome. Welcome to the show. How I'm curious how you and, and Justin got connected and how you guys ultimately decided that when you were thinking of DJ's future and, and what college might look like for him and what building a brand would look like, how you guys ultimately got, got connected and you guys decided that, hey, this is the guy that I think can help my son uh, get to that next level um, in his both college and professional career. Yes. Um, so we got connected with Justin. Uh, it was mostly my husband. My husband, he does all the talking. He's not real big at talking. <laughs> at all but um he did all the um intro he got all the introductions and everything and so i believe was it malachi's dad introduced him to justin um my husband i don't know how he knows everybody but he knows everybody <laughs> and so i just don't know half the people he knows so he got introduced to justin so we started talking and meeting um and just discovering the idea and you know we had other agencies reach out to us but honestly we we're in texas so you know certain things are not legal um so we just kind of started visiting with people and honestly you know at that time we thought that some of the other larger companies were just kind of too big for the platform right then. We wanted the more personable. We wanted to, we are very big on family oriented type things. So we wanted someone that we could sit down and have open and honest, transparent conversations with. And so when we met Justin, it was like, I mean, he was like family from the time, moment we met him. Um, and we just felt connected. And then the, the things that he was talking and he's made ways on it. Like, it's been amazing. I think you guys have handled it, uh, this, this entire process in a very gracious way, uh, just watching from afar. Uh, momagers, parents sometimes can overstep or you just be too light helicopter parents. Uh, what kind of advice would you give like the average parent that is dealing with the recruiting process and trying to find an agent and all of that? That was a good name, momager. Yeah. I, well, you know, it's so funny that you say that because I tease DJ a lot. I say, you know, I'm your manager, right? Because, because, and he's like, no, you're my mom. But um, I would, the advice that I give to people is 
um, you know, sometimes there's not that role of mom and dad in the household. So I understand that. I'm so blessed and fortunate that we are able to do it as a team. Um, but with parents is never lose sight. Like, first of all, I'm just going to be straight honest with you. Um, money is not everything to us. My son has to maintain an image. My son loves the Lord. My son has a special, like he doesn't want to, I don't care who's offering the most. Like, it's not about that. It's, I do not want my son to lose his identity. My son doesn't want to lose his identity. So if something doesn't match him and what he believes in and what he stands for, then we just, it, money's not everything to us. Because this opportunity, I truly believe that he was chosen and God allowed him to use the, his platform to draw others. So we just can't be a part of everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's just the biggest advice I tell people. I would tell parents, don't lose who you are, nor who your son is because of the price of a dollar. Because money isn't everything. If you develop right, his brand and his beliefs, then God's going to take care of the rest. And I truly believe that. And this is not money, but this is probably speaks to kind of that loyalty, that family. Um, I'm sure there were some big schools with 16,000 seat stadiums in Texas because everything's bigger in Texas that uh, maybe called and was like, hey, I don't know if you guys want to move from Willis, uh, but we would love to have your son here and he can play quarterback. What was it about your family and, and DJ's desire to, hey, I'm from here. I'm going to play here all four years and I want to win a championship at Willis and just staying in kind of the impact that maybe your family has had in that community as well. Yes. So you're, you're right. We, um, my boys uh, went to a private school. Mm -hmm. So we, it was always under the impression with us that we were going to go um, all the way through sixth grade, seventh grade. We were going to start public um, my husband also coached at the private school, but we did, we had people call and said, Hey, we'll buy your house, move to the woodland, move here, move there, move, you know, but my son, we, we did, we had the opportunity to choose where he wanted to go. And, um, he basically said, um, you know, and we didn't have the greatest football team then we didn't. And I had a lot of nephews and stuff that played and kids that we knew from Lily that played. We should have had a great team. I don't know why it wasn't great, but it wasn't. And um, he said he has this mentality to where he's like he wants to make a name for himself. And he was uh, and he is so funny because he didn't want to be his dad's number. He was like, I want to go to Willis. I'm going to pick my own number out because his dad had a little legacy here in Willis. He was like, I'm going to pick my own number out. I'm not going to be my dad's number and I'm going to make my own name and I'm going to he always envisioned like he's like they're gonna do a show about us one day we're gonna be the i'm gonna be on a show one day where the underdogs they're gonna talk about how i mean turn this program around and when i tell you he lives up to that stuff i mean it's it's just phenomenal but he made in his mind that that's what he wants to do me and his dad both graduated and we're athletes from here um my whole family from willis high school um and he just said no I, I want to do it at Willis. I want to be a Willis Wildcat. And so we gave him the choice, but he chose to be here. Dad well, like, playing at Baylor uh, might have played against him then. Played against Baylor then. <laughs> like, oh, well, listen, I went to dad's high school, and now I'm getting out of here. It did play against it. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. It absolutely played against Baylor a little bit. You know, they were, we were so thankful that that was one of his first offers. But at the same time, he's like, I don't want to follow. You know, I, I want to set my own name. He wanted to step out and be his own person. He always has wanted to do that. So, yeah, it kind of did play against Baylor a little bit. Sorry, Justin, Just go ahead. Yeah, I mean, did you hear those parallels? People, I'm going to be honest, people ask me all the time. You know, why did DJ go to Florida? Why would he want to go to Florida where he's got to help elevate the program? There's so many programs that he could mm. go where it would be. He knows he's in the national playoffs every single year. And, you know, I think sometimes people think I'm like, you know, blowing hot air. But the truth is, look at what he just did in high school. He could have went somewhere that's easier. And, you know, I think sometimes I tell my, my Gator friends and they get like beyond fired up because the truth is he really wants to elevate the program and bring it back. That's what it is about to him. And, you know, I mean, Let's look, we've seen, it, we've seen it in eight weeks. I mean, I don't want to say it. It, it. We actually were on a Zoom, uh, me and Mr. Lagwin, Nikki and Michaela earlier. And it's like, I don't want to speak at a turn here, but it's like 
the program, as you see, like the, the energy he brings that program when he steps on the field. And it, it, for me, I'm kind of like looking at this because I lived through the Tebow era. I mean, what are we, eight weeks in? And the team already looks to him. You can see that. Mm-hmm. Right? They didn't have the energy last week because when they don't have him on the field, they don't, I think they don't feel like, you know, they think they have any chance to win every game when he steps on the field. Absolutely. And that's crazy to happen almost three quarters away through a season. I think that's what's amazing to me, right? Like, to just see that, and that, but that's because he comes from. Look, he has two amazing parents. I mean, he works his he works super hard, and they both work hard every single day. They're grinding, you know, and that comes from him. So, and that comes from them. So, um, what do yeah, you guys? Just, like, I talked to him as a recruit. I had to tell him to stop calling me sir. I was like, listen, I know <laughs> I've gone gray prematurely, but you have, I'm, yeah. I'm only thirty five. I'm like, that's just you look, just Nick. Just Nick. It's please. instilled in us. Yeah. It's instilled yeah. in us. Yeah. What do you guys, because a lot, of, it feels, and I think he can handle it, but it feels like this whole thing, I, I tweeted this like a day or two ago, like a lot of this is hinging on his shoulders. Um, and I, I do think he's a kid that came in from day one. I was around him at a, a visit, and I and I tweeted, yo, it, the aura of that kid is different. You just can feel it when you're in the same building as him. It feels like a winner, you know, in a lot of different aspects, not just ball. He just seems like a winner, a winner uh, energy around him. But it seems like a lot of pressure for somebody that young. Like, what kind of advice and what type of, you know, um, wisdom are you guys giving them to be able to handle that type of pressure? Because it's a lot. Well, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. Since he was little, since he started playing football literally at five years old, the pressure has always been on him. He has always had the pressure of the whole team. Like, he is literally, from day one, like, five years old, carried a whole team. Like, I mean, a whole team trying to tackle him and he couldn't do it. And my husband was his coach, and it was always a lot of pressure. Now, me as a mama and younger, learning as he was younger, I didn't really understand that. But my husband was, you know, as we got he got older and started he's like, I knew the greatness was in him, and I had to put him under that pressure because there's so in life um and so but one thing i love about him is dj does not like he doesn't entertain that and he always because as a mom you know you read stuff you hear so i literally had to get off social media on so i never really was on social media any, anyways but i have to some of the things are harsh and hard as a mom to listen to and hear and i'm thinking to myself like they don't even know how hard this kid works and what he does and the effort that he puts in and for them to say these things about a kid is like awful but he is up for the challenge he does not let that stuff bother him he's like look I just want to play football. I love it. I have my goals, and he does. He's a very goal-oriented kid. He writes his short-term goals, his long-term goals, and he checks them off as he accomplished them. And um, he just wants to play in the NFL one day. And, like, he's his goal was, like, I literally am in tears watching him live his dream. Like, I don't know if most parents get to ever see their kids Further, me and him, I just remember us laying on the couch together, watching like a game. I don't know nothing about football. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Uh, he's telling me, explaining everything to me, you know. And he's like, "Mama, I'm gonna play in the SEC one day. I'm gonna play on Saturday nights. And once I get done doing that, I'm gonna win a Heisman or I'm gonna win a national championship. And I'm gonna mm. go to the NFL." And From his I'm watching God, this stuff me. happen. And he's put in the work to make it happen. It's just, it brings tears to my eyes. At the time, you're like, all right, that's that's cool, DJ. Go do your homework. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I, I want to ask a little bit, and, and I don't want you guys to necessarily have to speak out of turn. I, I know as DJ's, or, you know, DJ's recruitment, and I know that you guys were obviously both heavily involved, but also it, it was his decision, right? And I know that you guys would support him, uh, it mm-hmm. seems. Um, I've not asked you this question before, wherever he wanted to go, right? Um, but what was it about Billy Napier? What was it about Ryan O'Hara? What was it about the Florida Gators that that really stepped out, right? Because when DJ committed, Billy Napier was in his first year at the University of Florida. Florida was on way to their, their second under 500 record. But what was it about Billy Napier, Ryan O'Hara, and the University of Florida that really got DJ's attention to the point where not only did he commit relatively early, he stuck through it. He stuck through all the rumors uh, about him and, and obviously some, some very heavy pushes by the top programs in the country to try to get his commitment. Um, what I would say is because my husband did do a lot of the recruit process because I have a younger son, so I had to stay back with him as he did his select ball and stuff. So my husband went a lot and – Um, I would say what I noticed and what DJ would tell me is uh, 
what he felt. Now, we would always tell him what he felt from Coach o O'Hara and Coach uh, Napier. Um, it's more than the way we raise our kids. Like, I tell him all the time, like, when we were looking in this process, I was like, you have love the coaches, but you got to love the school and the area that you're in because things happen, things change, coaches leave, coaches, you know, thing, anything can happen in this world. And so I said, you, you have to know this. And he was like, I do. He said, but one thing he pointed out to me, he's like, they are not only concerned about me as the football player, but they're concerned about me as the young man, the husband, the spouse that I would be, the father that I would be. And he really looked up to that. And I'm going to be honest, like, um, you know, the the relationship, like, we're, we're not like super, super holy rollers, you know, but we believe in God and we pray and we go to church and we, we believe in fasting. We believe in talking to God. We believe in asking for help, you know, and things like that. And he recognized that I, he has a strong sense of discernment. He always has as a little boy and I had to respect that. But when we made it, we all went into, we, as a family, we fasted and prayed about it. And so we did a choice fast during this time when we were making decisions because we didn't take it lightly. We didn't want to do anything that God didn't want us to do. And so um, he took that very he took that very serious. And he always wanted to play in the SEC. And so that was one check. And then for Billy Napier and O'Hara to have the to want to put the time in to teach them, he felt like he could learn so much for th from them. And they wanted to teach him. Um, and he just love that feel, that connection. Cause this is what I'm telling you. I would have to tell them, okay, enough football time, to do your homework. Now you got an essay due, you got a paper due because he would study the game and he felt that help. Cause if he would text them and be like, Hey, I got this situation. They would respond back to him, you know, during this time. So he felt that connection. So, um, I trust his, the way he feels and he felt very strongly about that. And he loved the connection that he had with the coaches. I knew so it wasn't so it wasn't Justin uh, repping for his alma mater at all. <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't Justin. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you know, look, yeah, no, I and you know, like you said, something. Well, first of all, I love my alma mater, but you know, when you take the responsibility of representing a client, you got to put their priorities first and foremost. And um, you know, I told them that, and that's the truth. You know, um, I mean, I have such a personal relationship with the Lagways now. You know, it's bigger than this. And, and one of these things is you never know in this NIO world where the journey is going to go, you know, and, um, you know, but uh, it, it's, uh, you know, he, he, like you said, I just keep going and going back to it of, you know, not to get the fans too excited, but he generally is up for the challenge. I keep hearing it. And Nikki said it a couple of times. He's up for the challenge. And honestly, in this day and age, there's, I don't know if there's that many kids that are like that. I think that speaks to right. who, who he raised and also watch, you know, watching who players want to come play with him now because they see who he is. You know, he's kind of got a little bit of that old school, you know, old school tough, tough in him, but also with the, his game is so flashy. So he's kind of got a bit the best of both worlds, right? He's got the leadership and old school mentality kind of set in the new NIL era. It was, it's, it, it was interesting watching recruits because DJ gets to campus in December and they're, you know, hosting recruits for, for camp and stuff like this. And and we interview a kid who's 16, 17. He's like, I, I met DJ Lagway today. And we're like, okay. Okay. You can see that aura and that kind of magnetism that he already had with the, the kids in high school from not even from Texas, from Florida, from Georgia, wherever they were coming to visit from. Um, so he might have to be put on payroll as a recruiter uh, for them because just talking to the kids, you can tell, like you just said, Justin, that, other players want to play with him uh, and be on the same team as him. I got a two part question. First of all, um, how do you assess? Because you got plenty of Gators on your on your um, on your, on the TNA roster. Uh, Shamar James is one of the kids that I did some content with, with in the past. Uh, one of my favorite Gators right now on that team to be around. Uh, but how do you assess? kids nil value and place them with the right deal and also how did the gatorade thing go down with dj lagway what was the story behind that uh how do you place value you know first things first uh, you know there's a lot of people who want to work with talent and it's put it this way i don't know say it, they're okay with signing talent that they think are just going to be lucrative just from an nil 
I always have kind of a higher bar. It's one, I have to think that they have the potential to be a great NFL player or long-term potential, because if you're putting your time and effort in someone, you have to believe that. Like to me, our, our, our journey on the marketing and branding side is, you know, this is just the second inning, right. With DJ's college career. So assessment, like, do you think they have a chance to be a really great player long-term Two, can you work with them and the families? I mean, I tell the parents that, and Nikki knows this, we're about 80% in business with the parents. I mean, you're dealing with kids that when you first meet them are minors. So you better feel comfortable in being in a good work group with both of the parents and understand that. Then the third piece is, you know, I remind all the clients, even though they're young, it's work to be marketable. It's not that you just roll out of bed. Um, a lot of that, you know, do you want to do your social posts? Are you willing to sign your trading cards and be responsible, respectful when someone's paying you for something and you make you sign up and make a responsibility? Are you going to show up and live up to your responsibility? Because all that stuff happens behind the scenes and ultimately brands, you know, figure that out. So to me, it's about really assessing their personality type. You assess what kind of player they can be. Then you meet a lot of you meet the parents and you meet the kid and see, like, are they up for this journey? And then also just really taking maturity into account like i people i think sometimes these the kids in nil get a bad rap there's also a lot of really mature kids like like that i'm like man what i was doing when i was 16 i mean you know like i i think that's what's amazing to me is that they've they've stepped up to the challenge i mean i'm sure nikki is thinking you know a year and a half ago you know what she had to do for dj but like he's now on campus and has all these other responsibilities and he's stepped up to the challenge. So, um, you know, there's no perfect science to it, if that makes sense. Um, and I think it's just setting that expectation and seeing if you can kind of match the effort. How much you can both probably speak to this. How much does it take a team? Um, cause like <laughs> you just mentioned DJ getting to campus and I don't know what the home situation was, but when I went to college, uh, at a state, it was the first time I was doing laundry. Um, and, and I didn't know how to do that, let alone go to class. And what do you mean 7 a.m. class after after a 5 o'clock lift? How do you manage, hey, we have all of these NIL opportunities and not overloading somebody who is now also learning to live on their own on top of to play uh, high-level Division One football and, and, and managing all of these things in just time? Nikki, you should go first. I'll go. I, I, this is unbelievable. <laughs> it is. It definitely takes a team. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my husband makes fun of me because, like, we go to every game. Like, uh, we've been like that since Little League. Uh, it, one one parent has to be there, you know, because we have two boys, I, especially football. I just feel comfortable with one parent there. So we, um, when we go to Gainesville, like, um, I have a job to do. When I get there before I leave, I do laundry. I clean up. I help him. I, I that's just the mom in me. And my mom is probably worse than me. Cause even if I try to let him do something, she's not going to let him do it. Um, with me at every game as well and goes to his apartment and takes care of it. Um, but he does, I do notice like we're still learning. So when he first got there in January, you know, it was off season taking mostly classes. He was good. He was cleaning his apartment. He was getting his stuff. He was going shopping, doing what he needed to do. Now football season, He's focused like he is locked in. And I know that because at home he was like that. And so I know I have to step up and help some if I'm able to. Um, yes. Does he know how to do all this stuff? Yes. Because we made sure at home that he knew how to take care of himself. I told him mom's not going to be here forever. And you mm -hmm. may not have a wife one day to help you do all these fun things <laughs> that we do. And so we made sure that they knew how to cook clean and things like that. Now, they are spoiled. My boys are very spoiled. And I enjoy doing that for them um so my husband doesn't like that so much <laughs> because he thinks i should just be focused only on him <laughs> older but um no he knows how to do this and it's a lot so when he has to sign those cards i like he receives it better from me my husband is more of like boy get your butt in there and sign those cards you know get on what you gotta do and i'm like and and he, he says i'm not kissing his butt that's what he says i do I don't. I just talk a little softly, babe. You know, your business. We have to take care of this. So I need you to set a deadline. In two days, I need you to have at least the first packet done. <laughs> you know, I kind of soften it up a little bit. But, you know, so it's definitely a team effort um, with all of it. Because um, he's learning, too. 
that he has a lot of responsibility that he still has to do. These people are um, giving you deals and you're um, reaping the benefits from it, but you have a job to do. And so it's it's been a work it's been a learning process through um, non football season and football season. So I see things I'm learning things that I can do better next year during season. I want to walking say- in and writing down his uh, his goal list: finish packet of cards, signing, and text put that him on every his day. Goal list. Yeah, I want to say one thing. You know, she, Nikki. First of all, she wears two hats because she one she's his mom, like she just said. But like, I want to actually take you guys through. You know, we joke that they're kind of like mini pros. Like we have a weekly call. We just did it earlier today. Myself, Derek, Michaela from our team, Doug, our chief strategy officer. We go down the whole DJ business in an organized fashion. These are all the things we have going on. These are all the content things we have to do. These are all the deals that are in queue. We try to make it as easy and organized because, look, everyone's moving around. We anchor. That's the DJ weekly meeting starts up top, right? Then Nikki, right? We strategize. Who's going to get DJ to do this? Who's going to get DJ to do this? All right, Mr. Lagway, you're going to call him and you're going to push on this, right? And um, I think what we try to do is on the network advisory side, make it as easy for them to consume and make decisions. That's the first layer, right? Then, of course, it gets escalated. All right, we, we all like this. We're on board. It's got to go to DJ. DJ, do you want to do this, right? And then once he signs off, yeah, I want to do this, then we all make it happen. But um, it's definitely organization um, and and not overwhelming, right? Like the way we've set it up is, you know, and I think that brings DJ some peace. He knows that his mom, myself, Kayla, his dad are all talking about these things. So if it makes it to him, it's because it's basically at the final point. And then look, something else that's been said, um, you know, we don't say yes to everything. I mean, and that was something I going back to, to the lagways, you know, and maybe it's just them knowing their son and betting on it. Like, I want to say they're not surprised that we're here where we are. Like she, he, he, Mickey's told me since day one, I met him, he's always been exceptional. So maybe other people are surprised because he's a true freshman, but I don't think the the lagways are surprised where this is. So we've kind of been preparing like, you know, he's he's a mini professional. He's a professional. Like we've been building this way for now, almost you know, since he stepped on campus and it seems to be working. How close was he uh, to playing Saturday and what, what how has he been dealing with the injury? No comment from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was freaking out when I saw him out there warming up. My youngest son, my youngest son was like, because he had already told me that he wasn't going to play. And then my youngest, son was like, mom, mom, look at him. He's geared up. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so, but he knows his. And one thing I give him, I give him props for is I've taught him over the, my professional trade, I'm a physical therapist. Even okay. though they don't respect me as a physical therapist, they only see me as mama. <laughs> But I'm a physical therapist. So I've always told them, listen to your body. Your body will tell you. And so that's always been really big with me to tell my boys to pay attention to your bodies. And I say, don't rush it. Don't push it. But they are competitors. They And I know that competitive part. So everything in him wants to play. He was so, listen, when they called me back, he was so disappointed. He said, I let my team down. Oh, and I was like, man, baby, you didn't beat Georgia, man. We was about to beat Georgia. I felt it. He was you know? so disappointed. He was so disappointed. Uh, he was like, I, you know, and I was like, baby, you have no control over that. You just got to worry about getting better and healing from there. But he is such a competitor. He wants to be on that field. He does not like to be on the sideline, but he, he recognizes his place whenever, you know, he, and he respects his coaches and understand that everything has a place and a time. And so, and we've always taught him that, you know, just wait your turn, be respectful, do what you got to do. But when you get out there, show him what you got. It kind of, Every, kind of everyone that, everyone was asking me, everyone was asking me, is he going to play? I said, guys, <laughs> the plan is for him to not play, but can I tell you without a shadow of a doubt that yeah. that is the ninth hour? And I'm not going to lie to you. When I was sitting next to Mr. Lagway and he had those pads on, I said, oh, boy, because, look, it goes back to he's a leader. And he knew deep down, I think what was probably killing him is that he knows that he they look to him to lead and not being able to do that. I think that was probably the tough point. But like Nikki said, I mean, Nikki and Derek knew that ultimately he was going to do the right thing, which – you know, it's amazing. Uh, it, also, I say this about the Gator Nation. People generally care about him because it's interesting. Everyone, of course, would love to see him play. But all every there was, there was half of people like, 
you better make sure he doesn't go out there like like it was his own son, which they loved yeah. him like that because they which was really cool to see of people, you know, getting their out of their fandom and really being like, we gotta we gotta look the best out for our DJ Lagway. We gotta protect mm-hmm. him, which yeah, was a cool thing. Yeah. 100%. It, um that that kind of that leadership you mentioned. I remember seeing there's like a clip on ESPN as it was leading up to the Sanford game. And um I think Derek Wingo when when they, on his podcast said that DJ kind of looked to Derek as you know the fifth year senior like all right break down the huddle and Derek looked at him and was like no it's your time and just to see how not only how DJ commanded it but the way the team was looking at him in week two of the season um I think you know I think everyone saw uh those leadership qualities that you guys have been talking about I want to ask you guys a question. I know that it, it seemed like DJ and Graham Mertz got along very well, that they became very close friends. And the, the, I guess you meet them during the recruiting process and then obviously coming on a campus in January. Um, what was that process like and, and, you know, what their relationship's been like? Probably some sort of mentorship. Obviously, there's the competition aspect of it, too. But um, obviously, when when a lot of when, when DJ Lagway came on a campus, a lot of Gator fans were already kind of clamoring for him to play. Um, so, so what was that experience like? What was kind of that, that quarterback room experience like for him as a, as a friend and as a teammate, but also saying, Hey, I, I know that I want to be the guy out there starting. He, um, one thing I can say is when we met, I, like I said, I think Derek, my husband and DJ met Graham prior to me coming. I met him at the official visit that we went down to. And when I tell you, we sat at the same table, we talked and I mean, just their relationship, like even like when he got injured, DJ got injured uh, the other day, like Graham was in there. DJ is, uh, he's just like me. He's stubborn. And Graham was like, "Uh, let me cut you. Let me get your tape off. He's like, I got it. I got it. Graham's like, you're not cutting your own tape off. I'm cutting it off. Graham was like over there on it. You know, like, the rela- and like I can't tell you how much how many times my husband and I have hugged Graham and talked to his dad and family and said how much we thank them for Graham is such an amazing person. I mean, these kids go to church together. Like they go to the same church. Um, they see like DJ has said how much he's taught him, how he mentors him, how he looks up to him. Um, that is like phenomenal because, you know, me as a mom, you know, I think about, you know, I'm thinking about, oh, my God. Like even my kids coming from private school, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I don't want anybody to be mean to my baby. You know, and I know he's he's a big baby, but he's my big baby. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, with the competition. And I feel bad because, you know, people are coming. I don't like that. Like, um you know, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. Like it made me and my husband feel very uncomfortable when we're sitting in the stands and people are Graham's out there doing his thing. Um, and we're cheering him on because he's great quarterback, great person and a great athlete. And people are like, put DJ in and DJ Lagway, you know, start chanting his name. You know, that makes me feel very uncomfortable. At the end of the day, I think that people forget that these are these are kids like they're not kids they are young men, but they have parents. People have feelings. People have emotions. And I get the fans get all into it. But that really made me feel because has 100 percent wholeheartedly taken my son under his wings and shown him the ropes and still teaching him the ropes, being there for him. I mean, like when we went back there for the Georgia game, when he was, Graham was right by his side sitting right by his head, like sitting right by the bed, like right there. Um, and he didn't have to do that. Like, I mean, he that didn't, he didn't have to be there. They, that's not mandatory that he sit right there. You know, and he was helping him get a clean shirt, helping him get his uh, pads and stuff off, you know. And here he is, just had surgery. You know, that speaks volumes. And me and my husband can't thank him and his family enough because they've been, they've shown nothing but love. And they've been so amazing. And I love the fact that those boys, and I think it has, you know, me being that mama and that Christian mama, I just know it has nothing to do, it's just all God. Because it's not like they have a, a, a competition. Like, it was no competition. I, like, I never felt that competition vibe or the energy. And I have asked DJ because I want to know those things. Like, did, did it ever feel like that? You know, those questions. He said, no. No, he, he mentors me. Like, he wants me to do better. Like, he shows me the ropes and stuff. And so, I, you know, I can't do anything but thank God for that. Graham is just an amazing young man. And, I mean, we love him to death and wish him nothing but the best. I mean, he's been amazing to my son. And I know that that is someone that my son will always have to lean on. We um, we got a chance to talk to Graham right before his surgery. Um, And when Graham came, I think the general reaction was, what is Florida doing going to Wisconsin to get a quarterback? They run the ball 70 times a game. 
Mm -hmm. um, and, and after Graham uh, talked to us in the media, I talked to him a little bit off the side and he said, Hey, I'm doing a pro day. And in my head, I'm trying to do the math. And I'm like, that's, that's a quick turnaround. Um, but I told him, I said, I've learned something over two years. I don't doubt Graham Mertz when he puts his mind to something anymore. So right. I said, I'll be there when you have your pro day. I'll be there. We'll cover it. That's right. I've got a, I've got a quick question because we've been trying to talk about it on this show. We don't have a nickname for DJ Lagway. Um, that had Dan's are bad. Dan's, oh, Dan's hold are on, not. hold on, hold on. I, I just want to know, is there an official – uh, agent and family nickname. Like I said, DJ Dimes, but it just didn't take off the way that I thought it would. Um, so Dan, they explained the structure how they as a team talk things through before they bring it to DJ. DJ Dimes wouldn't have been brought to the table uh, <laughs> at all. I mean, he likes, he likes to go on the well, he's got two things. I mean, you know, look, DL2 is what he goes by because, and you've seen that on some of the merchandise, that's mm -hmm. a couple things. He's his own man with the second, or with being two, which is his own number, but he also pays homage to his dad because DL1 is his father, right? So DL2. So, um, I mean, that's like his branding. You'll be mm -hmm. seeing that put out there. Um, you know, obviously on the other side, you have Lagway, which, you know, they couldn't have come up with a better name because there's, you know, you got Lagway all the way and there's the Lagway. There's all these yeah, things. Show me the Lagway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, but the mm -hmm. DL2 is what he really likes and uh, right. has a affinity towards that's this i'm one, i'm sure nikki has got sort of nicknames that she probably doesn't want to release publicly for him but uh i think know. dj doesn't want those out she doesn't yeah. Yeah, pookie sugar <laughs> dj dimes his, his nickname his honestly guys his nickname is dj right. um and it's so funny because everybody thinks it's d it's like Derek jr but it's not Derek jr his name is Derek jordan Lagway. Oh. So, um, and he always teases his dad because my husband and his brother are named the same. My husband's name is John Derek Lagway, but his brother's name is John Arthur Lagway Jr. And so DJ always teases his dad. He's like, I'm the original DJ. I mean, I'm the original Derek. You're not because his name is John. But yeah, but my son's name is really like DJ. And he went through a phase of probably maybe fifth grade. He wanted to try, he was still at the private school and he was like, I, I don't want people to call me DJ anymore. I'm going to start going by Derek. And so everybody started to said, hi, Derek. And he said, hey, did, they did that for about a week. And he was like, uh, yeah, go back to DJ. I don't like Derek. <laughs> so DJ well, is his nickname. Well, if it comes up, DJ Dimes is what I'm throwing <laughs> in. You like that? <laughs> if you're just looking for something else, you know what I mean? Respect just, the you hustle, know. Dan. Respect the yeah. hustle. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, gonna, I, I won't even take a commission, you know? Nikki, Nikki where did the name middle name Jordan come from? Derek loves Michael Jordan. He's the GOAT, right? Derek always, um, and it's so funny because both of my boys, y'all, my husband ended up doing the same thing that uh, his mom did, and he wasn't, he said he wasn't going to do this, but he did. He didn't even realize it. Like, I looked at DJ's baby book uh, not too long ago when we moved, and I looked at what we picked, like, the first name was Derek Jordan Lagway. The second name was Derek Jamal Lagway. Well, guess what? I said the name is Derek Jamal Lagway. And DJ's name is Derek Jordan Lagway. But Derek has always loved Michael Jordan. My husband has always loved Michael Jordan. He thinks he's the GOAT. He always is. And so he always knew that DJ, like, from the, he's just, he's just special. Like, he's been chosen. Like, honestly, both my boys are. Like, I just haven't even, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Like, nobody, and I, that's what I keep saying. Like, <laughs> I said that to someone today. I was like, man, they have not i even told dj this last night i was like baby you're doing so good i'm so proud of you and i was like baby they ain't even seen nothing yet y'all no one has seen what he really can do no one has seen that yet like he is just touching the surface like oh uh, he is I, I just can't wait till the world sees it because i'm like i want them to see what we know you got in you so i'm going to say something because you guys asked me earlier how the gatorade deal came to be um you know, let's just say that took a lot of pushing and honestly staying on top of Gatorade for over a year and a half about all the amazing accomplishments he had over his high school career. Right. He was the Gatorade player. So, look, I'm putting it into the ethos. I have my friends at Brand Jordan. I put it out there. You know, he's named you know, we're a Brand Jordan school. They've done a Brand Jordan deal with Zach Branch. I'm just saying Gator Nation, you know, you know, we should put some pressure out there. But, you know, I think as the, all jokes aside, those are kind of those partnerships you talk about, you know, like Gatorade made a ton of sense for him. Right. He's a he's Gatorade National Player of the Year. And, um, 
you know, it was just they got to meet him. They felt, and then when it was time to actually pick a player, they were like, you know what, we're going to place our bet on DJ. And um, it's been a great relationship. Um, it's been really cool for him to be in that. Uh, obviously, the spot with, as you just heard, um, Michael Jordan is is uh, is Derek's, you know, favorite uh, athlete. So, um, just pr- pretty cool. Speaking into existence. That's right. That's right. I'm speaking it into the existence. That's right. Love it. Any final questions, guys, before I let these fine folks go on with the rest of their evening? What was the – up this week? What was the, <laughs> <laughs> what was the ticket request like uh, being, back, being back in your home state last week? Ooh, listen, I was, I was a little, okay. So I was a little disappointed because a lot of people, um, were like, my husband and I both come from a huge family. Both sides Mm -hmm. of our family are huge. So like pretty much half of our family on both sides, make up the town that we're from basically. (laughs) Um, and, um, so it was so crazy. Like my phone, like literally both of our phones literally blew up. Like, and they were like, and I, I was a little disappointed because they were like, well, if DJ not playing, I don't want to come. And I was like, come on now. You got to support the team. We're supporting the <laughs> Me Gators. Neither. Me we neither, were supporting the <laughs> Y'all don't think a hater. Tickets. How many people that did not come to that game because DJ didn't play? And I was like, oh, come on, y'all. Y'all got to still support the team because we were still there. We're going to be there regardless. But, um, yeah, it, the demand was crazy. I think they even chartered a bus from Conroe, which was our rival town mm. in high school. They chartered a bus because he had so many fans. Like, they wanted to charter a bus to go down there um, to Austin to um, bring their fans. And it's just, like, y'all, this is, like, surreal. Like, this is it's unreal down here. Like it's, it's crazy. Cause I'm like, this is just little old DJ. They grew up around here. Everybody knows us, you know, we're still the same. Like I'm actually sitting in my car right now because my youngest son had a basketball game today and they're, we're handing out, I'm on the booster club. So I'm handing it I'm part of handing out their playoff shirts. Cause our team again, back to back, 10 and 0. And so we're, we're cheering it up. I can't make it to the first game, but I'm, I do my part. Cause I have another one coming up, you know, part of everything. But um, it's crazy. Like, we have people trying to call me every day about where to get shirts from, how to get jerseys, how to get this, because Christmas is coming up. And these all these kids up here look for look up to him. Like, it is it's surreal. It's surreal. Can, can I say something? Because I want to brag on her. I mean, talk about this woman, Nikki, how she balances all of this. Like, <laughs> you guys wonder where DJ gets it from, but... I mean, she's so graceful being a mom and also stepping into this momager light and, you know, also just being there for the Gator team and being a spokesperson. There a lot of women, a lot of women and moms really learn a lot from her. Um, she's, you know, every step of the way kind of elevated with it. And uh, just uh, I just want to say thank you because she's made this process on us working together. Just just amazing. It's really been a lot of fun. Thank you. Also, man, everything you guys are doing is just uh, the the. It's, it means a lot, you know, imagery wise. You know, um, in our culture, is normally like you said earlier, is a single mom or is a parent missing? Uh, just from a, you know, a religious standpoint, a culture standpoint, what you guys are doing is 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 huge. You know, I'm, I'm a fan. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we appreciate both of you for joining tonight. Um, Might not be the last time we hear from you guys in the not too distant future. Maybe, you know. Um, But uh, Nikita, Justin, thank you guys so much for uh, for joining Stadium and Gale tonight. And certainly we wish uh, DJ nothing more than the absolute best. And certainly uh, as he gets back healthy and and certainly we want his long-term health uh, to be the first and foremost, as much as Gator fans are going to clamor for him to play, we just want him to be safe and healthy out there. And uh, I think both of you guys have done outstanding jobs, both in agent representation as both as uh, raising an incredible young man that seems you know, poised to do incredible things, not only on the football field, but in the rest of his life. So uh, you guys both deserve your kudos and, and accolades for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate it. We'll let you guys go and have a great rest of your day. Go Gators. Go All Gators. right, go Gators. That was, it. That was fun. That was good. Hey, shout out to the chat. You guys kept it.
I'll give you guys a Everybody seven and a half out of ten. Ar- Ar- Army sniper was getting a little a little a little hasty in the comments. He was getting a little <laughs> trying to get me to ask honestly, Billy questions. I can't do that. Honestly, the one question we should have asked her is if Aiden Warrior can spin it, because I think she would have agreed with me. Oh boy. Oh, she she would have agreed with you. That's one hundred percent. She just seems yeah. She I don't think she could hurt a fly. All right. No, um, um, he a uh, very mature man. Like I, I remember going to college. Shoot, if I had a little bit of money, like some of these kids do, reckless. 